Hello again. So what I'm going to show you now is the waveform object, which is a object that can graphically display and let you manipulate a, a audio file that's loaded into a buffer. It can let you select and send those selections to loop points for Groove. So it's a great way to interact with Groove, uh, similar to what I showed you with the playlist object, where you can select according to the graphic waveform. You can select something, and that's your loop. So what we need to do is make a little bit of an adjustment. I want to start out in mono. So I'm going to change my buffer to just be one channel. I also need to change groove to just be one channel. And I'll go ahead and change the live gain object to just be one channel. And everything's good. That's all I need to do. So I'm now going to um, first off, load up a mono file, and, and I'm going to go back into something I have. You can do anything you have, but I know that I have a mono file in some text recordings. Uh, since I changed the groove object, it's a new object, time stretching's not on, I'll go ahead and turn that on. And if I just start, the pulse of river, the memory of currents loose into walls. I need to update its loop status. The pulse of river, the memory of currents loose into walls. The pulse of river, the memory of currents loose into walls. So you know what you have. Uh, gain's a little bit lower than the sound effects, but that's fine. So I have that, and it's looping the whole file. So still using the machine. In fact, uh, I'll go ahead and leave machine as the buffer name. It's not quite a machine anymore, is it? Uh, back into editing, and I'm going to load a waveform object. And what's going to happen is I'm going to get a graphical interface. Now the best thing to do, actually, I can resize this, I can do whatever I want, but this waveform is an object, it's really best to go to its help page help patch and copy things in. Uh, because to make it work with any functionality, you need to have a number of objects attached to it. And these things exist in the help file. So I'm going to do an option click, bring up the help file, unlock the help file, and copy in these objects that I need. So um, try and just get what I want here. I don't need the groove object. I do need the set object, which I can't get without the read and replace. And I don't need the buffer objects or anything to get audio into it. I'm just going to copy, close this. I can actually delete my waveform object because I'm going to paste in the things that I had from the other patch. Um, and just put that here. So I can read and replace, get rid of those. And you'll notice here these patch cords running around, they're going to hide when I lock. You can choose to hide objects and their patch cords using the uh, hide unlock, show unlock if you've selected something from the object menu. Um, this is the waveform object. Obviously, floating point number boxes, the inputs will show you where they can start and stop the display and to start and stop loop points. Um, the selection start and stop points in this case. There's four tools. This is actually a picked slider. Uh, that has an image map loaded into it, and that goes into a sub-patch uh, that changes the tool based on what's been picked. And you don't have to really worry about this at all. If you open up the call, these are the different draw modes, or select, loop, move, and draw modes. And that's all it's doing. Don't really worry about this, but you can copy it in and use it. The only thing that we need to change is to set the waveform buffer to be the same as the buffer we've loaded sound to. So if I go in here, it's no longer foo, it's going to be machine. And then as soon as I click that, there is the waveform. And that's why it's so soft. You can see its amplitude is not that great. Now what can we do with that? And I'll unlock again so you notice. Uh, if I select something, it shows up in the select start and end. I can also type in up here, say 100 milliseconds, 
and my ending time could be 2000 and I can make my selection. So how that's working is that if I make a selection, which I can't do unless it's unlocked, unless it's locked, use the selection tool. And anytime I make a selection, that information is coming out the appropriate outlets. Using set and the number sends it to uh, sends it to the start and the end, but doesn't resend it out. So I don't have a feedback loop. The set message is important. So the number that's coming out of here gets fed back to the input, but it's not sent out. Now the way I use this, I'm going to move some things. I'm going to get the buffer name over here. And this is my loop start, or selection start. I want it to be my loop start and my selection end. I'm going to move them over a little bit out of the way so that I can patch them around. I'm going to actually use send and receives just because it's a little more easy to see. So send loop start. They send loop end. And then down here, receive loop start. Receive loop end. And now if I start this again. The pulse of river, the memory of currents loose in the wall. It's playing the whole file because I haven't selected anything since I sent did the send objects and receive objects. I can also use shift if I'm on one side of it I can add to a selection with the shift key. If I change tools this will let me take a loop length and move it around or zoom in and out by up and down. And so that's nice. I'm going to concentrate on those two tools. I'll go back to my selection. And so it's in the waveforms working really well as a loop control. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to move on to stereo because you can use stereo with waveform but you have to set it up just a little bit differently. So let's stop. Let's save my looper waveform. And now I'm going to save a stereo version. So can go back in. Um, the thing that I'm going to do is um, remember a few things with this. I'm going to go back in and get rid of all the stuff I'm doing. We'll save my loop and ends. But I need two waveforms. Should have gone to help first. Option click, multi-channel, and this shows a linked version, but it's not the best linked version. I'm going to go with a um, Selecting all of this. Picked up the link output and put it in here. And once again, I'm going to do some adjustments. I've got Easy deck down below, bring that in, and 
So the link output is a link outlet that will link my selections from one to another. And so what I'm going to do is I don't really need to see, I'm going to save some space. Let me get rid of this. Uh, same Patrick can control them both. I don't need the way, I don't need this buffer here. This can also use the name. You can name a buffer the same way you use set, but you have to tell it the file. So I'm going to go back into machine, turn it back into a stereo buffer, turn groove back into a stereo object, turn live game back into a stereo object. It's my starting point. So everything's empty again for the looping and time stretching. Um, and I'll get back to that. I am going to connect. You can see that the patcher is connecting and the load bang is naming both. This is going to be, this needs to be changed. So channel one of machine is going to be the name of the first waveform object. Channel two of machine will be the name of the second. I'm going to link the first four things. I can shrink them up a little bit because you don't need to see them. I'm going to do an option select on these patch cords and go into object and hide them on lock. You don't need to see them. Down here I'm going to replace these with the set messages. So set dollar sign one offset them a little bit so I can send them down. This will show you the selection and the message. It's just showing you what's going from one to another. It sends everything you need to know. I'm going to delete this. I don't really need to see it. This is my link. Okay. So I need to have a set for each output that I want to go display. So I'm option dragging to create copies. I'm going to patch cord them in. to hold down the option key and get both patch cords and objects and hide these on lock and bring my loop start and end back in here okay so I should be ready no I'm not ready am I set goes to the appropriate display so it's selected right now, and you can see the shortcut is Command-K will hide it on lock. So if I do Command-K right after I patch something, it will hide that patch cord. And that's my way of not having to loop these things around. I never want to see them in my patch, so it doesn't matter about showing or hiding. It's really the thing to do is hide them. So you can see when I go, all that goes away. So let's load something up. Um, I have to command double click on the load bang to get the naming to work. And then I can go back in here to replace machine and I can go back to my folder. Let's get a different servo uh, sound. Let's load it in and it's instantly in the waveform, just like it was for mono. Um, this is a louder sound. Turn the loop on and off just so that's back in and my time stretching back on. Um, so, and second channel, that always helps. So what I'll do, just to show you before I actually loop it, is by dragging in any one of these, it'll drag into the other, because they're linked. So anything that happens here gets sent to this one. Anything that happens in this one, if I'm dragging in the top, gets sent to the bottom. The bottom sends to these display start lengths, selection start, selection in, so that both show the selection, or so that the selection is showing up here at the top, and then these will be sent to my loop. So let's...
can go back and forth. Pretty clicky, I'm not worrying about things matching up. Uh, but. And while this is playing, Groove can actually let me reload something else in there. As long as the selections fit in, it's going to loop, so I can replace it with uh, the first servo movement. And now that loops, the same position, without ever stopping. Time stretching's on. and can move it around. Put that comment there and this comment's not being used. And now I have stereo control, graphic stereo control of audio in a groove being loaded into a buffer. This is gonna help us do a lot of different things, but I'm gonna show you next week some different ways we can play, some different ways we can control, some different objects you're going to like that. So that's all I've got for now. Bye. See you next week.